Hello and welcome to this demonstration using services to automatically open PDBs in a rack environment. For this demonstration, we are using a free node rack cluster, Hosto1, Hosto2, and Hosto3. The first thing we want to do is to check the services available to the listener running on each node. So on Hosto1, you can clearly see that we have access to an ASM instance, to a CDB instance, as well as the automatically default PDB service created for PDB1, which is the only PDB created inside that CDB. So we can check the same thing on the second node. And here you can see pretty much the same thing except for ASM and the CDB instance names, which are different. So each node has its own instances. And same thing will be seen on the third node with again, different names for ASM and CDB instances. Now let's check that no manually created services has been created for CDB1. And right now there is none. Okay, the next thing we want to do is to connect to SQL Plus to verify the open mode of your PDBs. And for that, let's make sure we can connect to the instance running on that node here. So the instance is called CDB1 underscore three. Connecting to SQL Plus and looking at V$ PDBs to look at the open mode. As you can see, there is only one PDB running called PDB1 and it is open in read write mode. Let's check the same thing on the second node, which is running CDB1 underscore one, the second instance. And as you can see, PDB1 is also accessible from the second node as it is open in read write mode in that instance as well. Let's do the same thing on the third node, which is running CDB1 underscore two, the third instance. And if we look at the status of that PDB, PDB1, it's again open in read write mode. So this is the current status of PDB1 inside that cluster. So that's the characteristics of PDBs running in rack is the possibility to have a PDB open in read write mode in either one two or more instances, depending on uh, what you want to do. Now let's exit from all those sessions. And again, here we verify the manually created services for CDB1. Right now, none exist, as we've seen already. Now, what we want to do is to see the implication of starting and stopping database in a rack environment and to see what are the consequences on the open mode of your PDBs. So here, we're going to stop CDB1, first of all. And before starting it up again, we want to show you this uh, minus eval option of the SRVCTL start database command which tells you basically on which node the, the database instances are going to be started. So here, database CDB1 will be started on all three nodes. Now, if we look at the status of CDB1, it is not running on any of the node because we just stopped it before. Now it's time to start up the database. So CDB1 is started up. And now we can verify the status to make sure that it is running on each of the nodes, which is the case. Again, if we connect to SQL Plus on the first node and look at the open mode, you're going to see the difference here. So PDB1 is now in mounted mode while it used to be in read write mode before. So let's check the same on the second node. And you're going to see the same result. So PDB1 is in mounted mode. Let's check the third one. 
and same result. So which basically means that by default, when you start up a database or a consolidated database or CDB in a rack environment, the PDBs are not automatically started. Now let's exit from the first SQL Plus session. And what we're going to do now is to create a service that we call my PDB one serve. So we're going to create it for database CDB one and especially for that particular PDB that exists, which is called PDB one. So we want an automatic placement of the service inside the server pool that is called CDB one pool. And the cardinality for this service will be one. So uh, the service will run on only one instance from the pool. That's what we are saying here. So let's create that service. Perfect. And let's verify for the sake of this demonstration uh, that the, the server pool, CDB1 pool exists, and it's comprised of the free servers, the free hosts that we are using for this demo. Now, before we start the my PDB1 serve that we just created, let's evolve on which node it's going to be started. So it will be started on host 2 So time to start it up. And look at the status of the services manually created for CDB1. And as you can clearly see, the my PDB1 service now running on Osto2. So what is the consequence of having started that manually created service on your PDB? That's what we are going to check right now. So again, if we connect to the first instance using SQL Plus, and look at the open mode of the PDB, it's still in mounted mode on the first node. Now, if we look at it on the second node, the open mode is now a read-write, and that's the exact consequence of having started the associated service for PDB1. So it automatically opens in read-write mode your PDB on the second node in this case. If we look at the third node, the status is still mounted. OK, so let's exit from the first session. And now we just show you here how you can use that manually created service to connect to your PDB without knowing on which instance it is open in read-write mode. So using the scan name, cluster01-scan, and the service name, mypdb one serve. Here, even if we are connected from the first node, is going to connect you automatically to the available instance that is um, running your PDB1 in read-write mode, in, in which case here, it's going to be the second node. So we just verify that we can connect and exit again. Now, let's have a look at the implications of uh, closing manually directly from uh, SQL Plus, PDB1. So we close PDB1. So which means that now its status on the second node is also mounted. So what are the implications on the service itself? And as you would expect, my PDB1 serve is no longer running because you close your PDB and it's closed on every node. The service is no longer active. Now, let's start it again. So let's start my PDB1 serve again and look at the status of the services running for CDB1. So my PDB1 service is now running again on a host 2. So what are the implications? If we look at the open mode of your PDB on the second node, because we closed it manually before it was in mounted mode, but now because we start up the service, 
you can clearly see that the PDB was open in read-write mode again. While it's still in mounted mode on the third node and the first node as well. Now, let's stop the service and see what are the implications on the uh, PDB itself. So if we look at the status of the services, none are running right now. And if we look at the open mode on the second node, it's still in read-write mode. So it's not because you stop the service that it's going to close the PDB. And obviously, it's still in mounted mode on the third and first node. Now, let's start the service again to make sure that it is started. We verify its status. So it should be running on OSTO2. And that's exactly the case. Now, let's exit from the remaining sessions. And what we want to do now is to look at the implication of stopping and starting the database, which is called CDB1 again in this case. So first of all, we stop the database. Then we make sure that it's down on all three nodes, which is the case. Now we look at the service. And because we stop the database, the service associated to that database uh, is also stopped. And now what we want to do is to start the database again. But before, let's use again this eval command to see where the database is going to be started. So here, it tells you that it's going to start the database on all three nodes, but it's also going to start automatically my PDB1 serve on uh, host of three in this case. So let's do the start command and see the implications. So if we look at the status, we are now certain that the database is running on all three nodes and that my PDB1 service is running on OSTO3. Again, we have the possibility from the first node to use this manually created service and the scan name to connect directly to the third instance automatically. So without knowing the placement of the service itself. So here we connect to the PDB1 database. And if we look at the instance to which we are now connected, you see that it's the third instance, which name is CDB1 underscore 2 running on a host of 3. So let's exit from this session. And now to finalize the demo, let's have a look at all the available services to each and every listener running on the cluster. So on OSTO1, you can see that we have, again, the ISM, the CDB, and the automated created um, default PDB service for PDB1. Same is going to be for the second host with different names for the instances. However, for the third node, it's going to be a little bit different because this one will host the MyPDB1 serve service. That's basically the end of this demonstration. Thanks for watching.